take as part of this world is really going to hold on to guilt. And if some parts seem attractive, then it does, it's not going to seem like this guilt is hell. Guilt is hell sometimes, and guilt is <laughs> ooh la la <laughs> sometimes. So, what does Jesus I don't know about this? If guilt is hell, what is its opposite? That's what the mind has difficulty answering that question because it doesn't believe that guilt is hell. As soon as the ego system is raised up into awareness, then the mind can say, ah, guilt is hell. I don't want this anymore. I choose the right mind as an alternative to the wrong mind, to guilt. But as long as it's submerged, and there seems to be all these attractive things on the screen, well, the ego thing is not all bad. There's still some good with this ego thing. It's not all guilty. It's not all bad. So you see how seductive it is, how important it is to, to raise it up. So how could God consummate a marriage? Good question. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Who said he did? No, he didn't. That's what I'm saying. It just hit me. There's no consummation of marriage then. I don't understand what you said. We get married under God's name and and we bring we come together under God and then and then the honeymoon, you know, you have sex and all this is just this union with God and marriage, if you're thinking supposedly the right way according to the world's eyes of marriage. But if we're li- the way we're looking at it, then what's marriage? Oh. What's marriage other than a special than, than committing to a special it's relationship? relationship. Because if there's no commitment to special relationships, then essentially we here are all in holy relationship. What's the purpose of marriage? You know, bring in everybody that's been ever in your life, bring them here, and if this room get bigger, 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 you know, what's the purpose of marriage? Yeah. So does God consecrate marriage, or does the ego consecrate the ego marriage? Has to, that so the ego has to exactly is it consecrate or consummate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tradition consummate means you've had sex with. Right. Right. Well, I don't think that's both. both. First, I'm saying it's under God, and then you have sex and consummate. So we're getting a little bit deep here, but the point is, is that it just hit me. What is marriage? Is the question. What is marriage? Very simple. Let's not go too deep. But what is marriage? You know. And again, we want to put it into perspective. First of all, in the in the consciousness where the world seems to be, marriage seems to be a very um, altruistic and very helpful thing. In other words, Jesus, when he spoke in the Bible of marriage, he was not with downgrading tones of voices. It was like this was something that was was good. And again, in the context of, of history, so to speak, if you wanted to put into that, where there was basically there was armies that would go and raid other um, villages, would rape the women and pillage, and then move on, conquer okay. another city, sack it, rape the women, move on. I mean, you know, talk about this total going for the pleasure and the sensation, and talk about lack of commitment <laughs> to, the, to the nth degree. That would be what the barbaric kind of times of the world would be like, and certainly what, what seems to be marriage, where two people commit to a relationship. You know, they sometimes say, well, that's who you part, or they commit to try to come together and love each other and cherish each other and honor each other, that's a big step from rape and pillage, you know. And from what we're ca- talking about here, again, that whole idea of marriage till death do you part involves bodies. And there's a much, much higher uh, meaning of marriage than what's the traditional view of marriage. So what we're talking about is aiming to that much higher one. We're not trying to put down <laughs> marriage as it's seen in this world, but we're talking about really elevating it up to see that uh, asking the Holy Spirit to come into our relationship and have no purpose other than God mm-hmm. and let go of all idols. That's, wow, that's a, kind of a marriage that we're moving towards. Thank you. I was just going to say, questioning it isn't throwing it out, saying, ah, uh, no. get marriage. Not at all, because I'm I don't know I don't what the hell does it mean that. anyway. It's just questioning what does it really mean and mm-hmm. let's, let's Let's take a raise look at that. it way up mm-hmm. and look at it from a much higher perspective. And then you can also look at what is divorce. This has person done that. Yeah, same yeah, thing. that's the same thing. I mean, Let's look at it from a much different perspective, mm-hmm. you get a much different view of it. Mm-hmm. Okay, look at it defining. Okay, but.
but before you go further, I don't understand if bodies aren't real, why we're concerned about this. About? About relationships, because if everything is in our mind, then, then why do we have to look at these things? Well, it's redefining it. In other words, we talked about earlier how we, in this world, relationships are defined in terms of bodies. That when you talk about uh, coming together, whether people living together or being married or, or working at a committed relationship, a significant other relationship, it has to do with the, these bodies seeming to come that, together. That's where I get confused. Yes. Because, you know, it seems like one day we're saying one thing and then the yes. next day we're saying, well, right. you know, they are sort of real if we think they are. Yeah, and we, we're starting there. And the only thing I'm trying to do is, is get to the point so that, that they're not just dismissed entirely, you have to start with something and then we're going to be moving towards holy relationships. To really come kind of what you're saying too is um, the ego basically doesn't care if the minds are kept private, but the key ingredient for the ego in its relationship, to use this definition, is that the bodies be together. So that's the ego's key thing. It doesn't care if you maintain separate interests from your spouse or your wife, if you have a whole world apart from them, a whole private mind, as long as those bodies are together. The ego believes that union is joining bodies. And of course, the consummation of a marriage and sexual, you know, relationship okay. is, even when you talk to Leo Biscavia and different people who study relationships, they'll look at all those different things like trust, communication. Sex is usually in there somewhere. You know, that's like seen as a, as a fairly important component of these kind of relationships. And again, to the ego, that's the central component. Not only sex, but we could say companionship. Being there together. You know, not being a part of it. Give me some time together, you know, under the same roof. Oh, don't be a workaholic. No, come back. And so, also, the ego tends to believe that its relationships, the bodies must be together. It uses guilt keep the bodies together. You know, oh, you you haven't spent time with your children. You're not being a very good father. You know, oh, you didn't, you aren't bringing home the money that I thought you should, should or, you know, little hooks, all those little hooks of trying to keep the bodies together. So really, where your question's going is, the ego's definition is keep the bodies together, keep the mind private. This direction that we're moving in, which would be to undo the illusion of that, of, of the ego would be to, oh, I want to join mine. Mm -hmm. I want to total, totally communicate. Mm -hmm. I want to have no private thoughts. Everything's on the table. I want, I want intimacy so deep and so close that I can feel free to share anything and everything and, and be loved and accepted and not be afraid that if I share those deep, dark secrets that my partner is going to gonna leave or that anybody can't even leave me. But this is all ego. It's, it's working towards Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the last, I would say that holy relationship, which is what we're going to talk about and we've been going in, would be really just being in tune with the Holy Spirit full time. Mm -hmm. Now, again, how that looks in form is irrelevant. You could, you could have bodies in any way, shape, or form. In other words, bodies together under one roof. Uh, you could have a, like a prophet or a saint who would wander through the wilderness in total relationship with all that there is because he's in tune with the Holy Spirit. So in that sense, it's a realization that minds are joined or that mind is one and that bodies are totally irrelevant to the whole idea of relationship. And that is consistent with what we've been mm -hmm. talking about. So what we're doing here is we're just kind of starting to, to trace it back towards that. <laughs> now, how do I explain that to Judy? Say, Judy? <laughs> bodies are irrelevant. <laughs> we need to join minds and understand how we do that. You know, and I guess I'm asking the question, how do you do that? Be very clear yourself. Exactly. Yeah, that's the thing where it starts. In other words, in my life as I've gone along, it's been more and more just valuing that communication and pulling attention away from the body. In other words, a lot of things, like we've talked about elements of special relationship, it's like, it seems important for the body to look good. <laughs> to be with a good looking body is, <laughs> is a big part of the self-concept a lot of times. Put your best foot forward and look good in this net. As you go along, it's like, 
more and more as Beverly was sharing the things about the makeup and diet and different things, you know, size, weight, shape. It's like, eh, the mind, there's no attention focused on that. Honesty, trust, integrity, you know, those conditions of mind are really raised up and really important. And the focus on the body, fat, thin, attractive, unattractive, sexually attractive, sexually unattractive, you know, dirty, clean, you know, I see these, all these things on TV, you know, the Andy Persburn commercials, you know, where the woman comes on and she says, hey, if he's got B.O., I don't want to be around him. <laughs> you know, kind of all the commercials that are really aimed at, you know, the body being a certain way, looking a certain way, smelling a certain way, cologne, cosmetics, you know, being in shape versus being fat and flabby and all this and that. It's just starting to say, in my own mind, no, I'm not going to raise up the body and emphasize the body, or even how how many how much much time that body is with me. I'm, the word a lot of times is what's your quality time mm-hmm. versus quantity time. I'm not going to be counting the minutes and the hours and the days that the bodies are together or apart. Really, I want to just communicate. I want to be able to just lay everything out and and, and totally reveal myself and in the process see that that I am, I am one with everything in that review. And if minds are what are connected in this relationship, then there's both quantity and quality time at all times. Yes. Regardless of... Regardless of the form of body. It's all in the attention. If, if my attention is, and I'm thinking about the body thoughts, and I'm thinking, oh, I miss so-and-so. I mean, I used to think that was a big, important component of relationships. The sign of love, sign of true love. Yes, mm-hmm. if you're with somebody mm-hmm. and they say, well, I really don't care if you're here or not, you know, mm-hmm. it's, that's not a good sign. That's <laughs> like <laughs> your relationship's on the rocks. If they're, they're pining and they're saying, oh, I miss you, honey, I'm, 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 I count the hours when you're away yeah, or this or that. Like the heart grows yeah. bond or... Or maybe even a mix, like, well, I don't want it to be obsessive here. <laughs> you know, get a life, but I do want you to miss me some, <laughs> you know. No, Jesus is saying the whole missing part is, is thought of bodies again. Mm-hmm. You know, when will that body be back mm-hmm. with this body? When will I be able to hold that body again? When will I feel their touch and all this and that? That's all mm-hmm. raised up as a crucial importance, and the communication is not. But what I hear Linda saying, which is something that Becca brought up the other day and probably does need to be addressed, is in that diagram where there's these little circles out on the side, okay, We've been talking about the circles don't exist because bodies don't exist, and yet we're really putting a lot of emphasis on relationship right now. So where is, where, what is the purpose, sole purpose of relationship in our purpose? It's to see that there are no private minds. Right. In other words, all those dots that we drew in there as part of the wrong mind, as part of the ego system. That's what the basis of the ego system is, is that everybody has a private mind. Or as I defined it early on when uh, Lynette was asking me, what do you mean by um, by assigning the properties of the body to the mind? That's exactly what private mind is. The, the, the bodies are separate, there's no doubt about that. And so the properties of the body, <coughs> separation, are assigned to the mind. And therefore, we seem, it seems like everybody has a private mind of their own. That's not true. That's, that's what we're coming to to see in true relationship is that there's really no, no nothing apart from my own mind. I may think I see dream figures out there. I may I may ponder about their motivations. Why did someone do that? Why? How could they? You know, ponder about their thinking. Or what are they thinking? Or even with pets, we talked about with cats and dogs. You know, do they have choice? What are they thinking now? Why is she so undecided? I don't know if if your question is totally answered. I I, I guess I was. Hearing, what I was hearing you say is something that I used to feel, and that is like, okay, we say bodies aren't real, but then in the next breath, we're talking about bodies. So which is it? Are they real or are they not real? What's the deal? I mean, I, I, that, I mean, it seems inconsistent sometimes, right? Because uh, you and know, the way things are. Here we them. all sit, but we're not real. Is that what you're thinking? No, I'm, I'm thinking...